Welcome back, seedlings. Today we're going somewhere over the rainbow. Somewhere over the rainbow. We've decided it's spring. I love both of those things in that picture. The rainbow and I the love sun. The rainbow, the sun. I love the yellow. Look how the color. sun's right behind the seeds. I know it's gonna pop out. <laughs> there we go. It means a lot to me. I love the purple, the oh yellow. Oh my gosh. I like it all. It's so pretty. Entire. It's some picture. kind of seedling field. Yepers. Are you ready? All right. We're going to go to numbers. Numbers chapter 14. All right. 14. Let's see. I am in 22. That is the wrong spot. All right. 14. All right, are you ready? Hit me. I want, hit me. I want you to start reading in verse 11. 11 through like 19. Can you do that? I don't know. That's a lot of words. I know. I know. All right. Numbers 14. Yep. 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them. I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a great nation and a mightier than they. And Moses said unto the Lord, then the Egyptians shall hear it. For though, for thou brought us up the people in thy might from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. For they have heard that thou, Lord, art among this people, that thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by day in a pillar of a cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. Now if thou shalt kill all these people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring his people into the land, which he sware unto them, therefore he hath slain them in the wilderness. And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of these people, according unto the greatness of thy mercy, and as thou hast forgiven these people from Egypt even until now. So, we've talked a lot about uh, judgment. Right. Right. So again, for our seedlings and our saplings and all of those who are moving on along the path of Christianity, when you talk about judgment, some of what what exactly are you talking about? Me? <coughs> what am I talking about? Judgment? Uh-huh. Um, um well, how do I want to word this so it doesn't sound uh bad? Well, judgment is bad, I guess. Um, it's consequence of sin. Mm -hmm. Consequence of sin. Uh, yeah, that's that's a summation. So is it consequence... It down a lot more than that, but... Is it consequence of sin, or is it consequence of unrepentant sin? Well, and see, that's where I was going to... See, that's why I said, how do I want to word yep. this? Because I was thinking, like... Yeah, I, it really is. Because if you say... I don't know, I was torn on this. Because I was thinking, well, there's still... Even when you repent, there's still consequence. Sure. But then it's not really judgment. It's just consequence. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I... You, it might be better to say on repentance and there's judgment. Mm -hmm. so, but there's still consequence either way to what we do. Unrepentant sin. Now, again, in my book, and correct me if, if you think I'm wrong, in my book, right, unrepentant sin can actually look and sound like maybe a little repentant, right? From the standpoint mm -hmm. of we have people who are getting up and saying, oh, we're really, 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 really sorry. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But we're, but that doesn't mean that they're repentant. No, people apologize all the time, and people acknowledge what they do all the time. Doesn't mean they repent. Okay, so I, and to me, that's important for our our seedlings and our saplings and people to understand, right? That when we're talking about the judgment of God is coming, right? It's because 
of unrepentant continual sin, right? right? We're, we've changed the rules to things and we start saying these things are now okay to God. Right. So maybe we should tell them what unrepentant means mm -hmm. instead of uh, sorry. So I feel like sorry is, sorry again, is an acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. It's feeling based, um, but that's it. You know, you, you you could feel bad about something, even legitimately. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you repent, there's change, mm -hmm. right? When you repent, there's, you feel bad, you're sorry. Mm -hmm. You don't feel, you don't, you know, you're not happy about it. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also change of mind, change of heart, change of action. Right. Right? Like it's, it's, it's an acknowledgement of the reality and then a change. Yep. So we... Again, we're, we're seeing this all around us, right? Um, and I'm not belaboring this point because, you know, I don't have anything else to talk about. I'm belaboring it because you've, you've said recently, and I think you're right, I don't know that we're talking about or we're understanding, really, that judgment is coming, right? But again, no, no. when God's judgment falls, does God just sit up in the, in the sky and point out laser-like those who deserve judgment and those who don't deserve judgment and those who deserve it get it and those who don't don't. Uh, I don't. I, I mean, I think I think he has that in his mind. I don't think that's what it looks like on the planet, right? I don't think it look it looks like that when he pours it out, mm -hmm. you know, because you could say, you know, when when he uses the the earth, right? Like yeah. when he pours out natural catastrophe as a form of judgment like we've all seen the stories of like the person who like survived but you know their whole house was crumbled around them like a lot of people would say well okay god deemed you righteous like that's why but then a lot of people would say no you got wrath because you lost your house mm -hmm. right so it's we don't he 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 knows it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right and he can go through and do that um, but again, I've talked about in judgment, like we think that uh, escaping the wrath and, and being worthy and righteous and all that means that we just survive. Mm -hmm. And that I think that's a flawed way of thinking too, because uh, we've been talking a lot lately about God's mercy being that he takes you to heaven, mm -hmm. right? So um, yeah, I think he is laser pinpointing, but I don't think it, we're going to know that. So we, we just have to worry about our own relationship with him. Right, so we like to look at the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah. right? And we like to think that that's how God judges. He, he sends, yeah, you know, some angels up. down and says, <laughs> hey, anybody who's righteous, get out, right? The unrighteous stay here and we're going we're, we're gonna to mm -hmm. let you up. We're going we're gonna to think. That's not how it necessarily works, right? That sometimes God says the rain falls on the just and the unjust, mm -hmm. right? But judgment when God judges, I, I do think you're right. I think he sees something in particular that right. he's judging, right? But it can fall on everybody. Well, it ha like, you know, I'm reading through all the prophets again. And, like, it's the same in almost every, you know, you go through Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and all, you know, it's always like, you know, the roller coaster, right? Mm -hmm. The judgment, the judgment. Here's, here's what your people did as a whole, mm -hmm. right? Your people yeah. as a whole. Right. Now, sometimes is it... Is it every person in a city? Yep. Like, sometimes God says, I can't find one. Sometimes it's everybody but Noah and his family, right? Um, which we shouldn't have a hard time believing. Right. Because right. we suck. Right. So, yeah, sometimes it is everyone. But if you read through all those judgments and all those things where, where he, he tells these prophets, tell the people the judgment's coming, a lot of times at the end he's like, but I'm going to save a few of you. There's going to be a few that are going to come out. There's going to be a remnant, a small amount. A small amount of you won't get the famine and the pestilence, and a small of you will escape to the woods or whatever. So, you know, but they're still going through it, mm -hmm. right? They're still going through it. They're still, they're still going to be scared. They're still probably losing their home. They're still losing yeah. Yeah. all their stuff, all the things that they, you know, whatever. Um, but they're not really getting the judgment that everyone else is getting. So when we look at what you just read, right? Yeah. We're looking at God seemingly saying, hey, I'm going to judge these people, mm -hmm. right? Because he says, how long? 
right? Well, these people despise me. How long will they not believe in me in right. spite of all the signs that I've done for them, right? Mm -hmm. So he, he's telling Moses about the frustration of these people, right? I'm, yeah. And then he says, I will, right? I will strike them with pestilence mm -hmm. and disinherit them. Yeah. Now, again, he doesn't say he's going to kill them all. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm going to give them a pestilence and then I'm going to leave them. Right? Yeah, which, disinherit them. It's worse than being dead. But. So it is it's definitely a judgment. Yeah. Right? I'm no yeah. longer going to be with you, right? But then he does the remnant thing that you said, and he says, But I will make you a nation greater and mightier right. than them. So there's your, you know, one percent again, or some sometimes ten percent if they're lucky. Out of all those people, Moses. Just, right. just Moses. Kind of sounds similar in nature to Noah, no. only not worldwide. Job. Right. I'm going. I'm going to do this. Right. So again, God states it factually. Right. This is what they've done. This is what I'm going to do in response to mm -hmm. that. Right. Now again, we're living in a time where a lot of people are talking about judgment, talking about what God's going to do, are actually forecasting what God is going to do, right? He's given them visions. He's given them things, mm -hmm. right? And so at this point, Moses has a choice to make, right? Right. Moses could either say, well, okay, God, right? Like, what, what, like this is just the way it's going to be and throw your hands up, right? Or Moses can do the, the crazy, right? The improbable, the impossible, and plead... To a God who seemingly has already made a decision for his people. Right. Well, so he thinks. I also think this was a test for Moses, but... <laughs> no, no doubt about it, right? That God's whole plan to comes To show in. his heart and everything, but... But Moses still had a choice to make. So when you look at... But we saw that with Hezekiah, too. I mean, it's, it, it does matter. Hmm? When you represent a group of people, it does matter what you do so with God. So maybe finish up this segment of seeds by telling our seedlings, like, okay... How can you hear about the judgment of God that may be coming, right? But still go to bat for the people that the judgment is coming to. Well, first, I mean, we have to... The thing is, judgment's coming to all of us, mm -hmm. right? And it's absolutely coming to this country. Whether you believe it or not, it is. Because um, we're wicked people and we've done a lot of bad things uh, that God has warned us against. But... Um, yeah, you know, we're really good at saying, oh, pray for Ukraine, pray for these people. Oh, pray for them. They're going to get judged. Oh, they deserve it. Right? But, like, we don't we don't look at ourselves, right? And I've been talking about that a lot, about, like, look at yourself. And um, you need to do your own repentance first. Because if you're living in unrepentant sin and you're boohooing with everybody else, God's not, God's not hearing your prayer the same way anyway. Because your prayers are hindered by your own unrepentant sin. So you got to figure that out first. You got to say, you know what? Yep, I am worthy of this wrath right now and I deserve this. And then you have to repent and you have to do that. And then you have to pray and you have to pray for the leaders of these people that they do stuff like what Moses did and Hezekiah and all that. Um, and you just, you just have to pray that, you know, that you could be worthy to be, to be the remnant or to escape the wrath. And escaping the wrath might mean heaven, guys. It might not mean that you're just hunky dory okay and like you know the tornado goes around your house like and your house is fine yeah. it might mean like you go to heaven and that's great that's a great thing um so just repent first get your own stuff straight um and then pray for everybody else pray for everybody else and ask god to you know help us be worthy to escape the wrath because yeah. we all need to repent in a in a serious way like now amen all right let's leave it there yeah. for today and pick up on the second part of this next time see you later see